In this video, I'm going to show you how to use something called the fact check model to evaluate the sources that you find on the web and so that you can understand the bias or perspective of other kinds of sources that you find even within library databases. So if you look at my screen, you'll see that um, I've done a search for Ukraine and Russia because I'm trying to find out what's going on there. This is a World Wide Web search. And you can see that I've got all different kinds of sources here. New York Times, USA Today, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, Al Jazeera, CNN. And even if I go down some more, AP, CNBC, um, why on? And how do I know which of these sources are good or accurate? How do I know which of these sources have misinformation? And how can I tell what the bias is from these sources, you know, the perspective, what they're writing? So I'm going to show you a really quick way that you can do this, and it's called the fact check model. And it was put together um, by this guy, Mike Caulfield up at Washington State University, and it's the way that fact checkers who work for professional media companies quickly check to see if the information in their stories are accurate. And it's really, you know, got just three main steps. One, investigate the source. Two, find the original source. And three, check better sources. So let me show you how to investigate the source. If we go back to this first page here, and you can see that there are some things that look like they might be interesting. I can tell if they're going to be good or not by investigating the source. And the easiest way to do it is to put the name of the source with Wikipedia next to it in a search box like this. And if I scroll down, I can see the Wikipedia entry for this information source. And what I'm looking for are the terms, you know, editorial stance or political alignment. This is going to tell me the background of the paper. So this is saying that the New York Times is typically liberal. The other thing that you want to look for is at the very top, it's just going to give you information about the paper, you know, such as how many people read it, how big it is, things like that. And that helps you know whether or not this is a legitimate source or if it is just some kind of thing that's created for misinformation or disinformation. So you can see here, like over 5 million people subscribe to it, that it's been around since 1851. If we go back, we can look at some other sources that you might not um, be as familiar with. So we could look at the Wall Street Journal, do the same thing. Let me do it on this other tab. So we go back to the Wikipedia entry and kind of do the same thing. You can come over here and see it's from, it's existed since 1889. It has almost 3 million people reading it daily. If you look at the editorial page and political stance, it'll let you know. And when you look at this, you can see that we speak for the free market and free people. So it's a different stance than you could say the New York Times. And you can keep doing that for your sources. So that's like the first step for evaluating sources is you want to understand what kind of source it is, who creates it, who reads it, so that you can put it into context, right? Then if you're on social media and you see a link to a particular source, you want to see if that is the actual story or if it links somewhere else. Um, and lastly, you never want to repost a source until you've read it. So I'd recommend that you kind of look through these videos here to get a better overview of a way that you evaluated sources. But hopefully, even just that one Wikipedia trick will help you be able to tell the background or perspective or bias of the source you're using and um, whether or not it's going to help you learn more about what's going on right now. Good luck.